Hi friends, uh, welcome to my channel. Today in this video, I'm going to show you how to configure OSPF uh, with the help of FRR daemon, routing daemon, or you can call it as a protocol stack. Uh, in the previous video, I showed you how to configure OSPF with the Quagga process. So uh, let's get started. So this is my PF sense. Um, if you click on package manager and then available package, if you search for FRR, you should be able to see there since I have already installed it. So it should be there in the installed package. As you can see here, I have FRR installed already, which supports PGP OSPF, OSPF version six, and in the previous video, I was trying to, you know, search a daemon which actually supports RIP version one and version two, and I came across uh, a daemon that does that. So uh, he's routed, the name of the package is routed, which supports uh, both RIP version one and version two. So if you are interested in configuring RIP version one or version two, then you can go ahead with this daemon. Uh, anyways, I am testing my domain with uh, the OSPF routing protocol. So, so the FRR is the one that I'm going to test it now. So it is already installed. And then once it is installed, you will have to go click on service, go to FRR OSPF since I have already installed it. So you see the configuration. It is bare minimum configuration that you are that you should have on your PF Sense firewall to bring up the edge senses. Um, under OSPF, you will have to click enable OSPF routing and then router ID is important. Uh, here in this field, you'll have to specify the router ID and then this is not required. Well, it says depreciated, but then I don't think this is required, but then I was trying to test something, so I mentioned the interface on which I'm trying to, you know, uh, run the OSPF, and the interface is going to be WAN interface. Under the interface, you will have to create the interface, like add, and then type, since I have added a WAN, so I have given the description as well. And you can see the description here. So the WAN interface is the one that is running the OSPF, and this is a description. I am trying to ignore the MTU because, you know, in my network, I have multiple devices uh, with uh, different MTU settings. So uh, you can do that as well. Otherwise, uh, your OSPF session will be stuck in X start state. Basically, that means that, you know, in next start state, you basically start uh, exchanging the packet and that packet will have the MTO field. So uh, make sure you check this box if you have devices in your network with, uh, you know, different MTO values. And uh, area you will have to mention, like here I've mentioned backbone area, which is area zero. And uh, this is important, hold down timer and dead interval. Hello interval and dead interval, 30 second and 120 second. I'm trying to match it with the peer uh, device. Uh, this should be the same on both the device. Otherwise, uh, you know, your peer will not come up. Once done, you will have to save it. Okay, so once you are done with this configuration under OSPF and the interface, you can check the status uh, under OSPF neighbor. Uh, there are multiple uh, things that you can check here. You can see here OSPF route. This is the directly connected route. And uh, this is the general, this is IPv6, this is IPv4. You can see number of interfaces in this area, total A and interface is one, since we have only one interface uh, configured with the OSPF. And then you can see here, this is the neighbor. We are uh, in adjacency with 23, 23, 23, 23. And you can see here, So, 
This is the directly connected network, so you don't see the routes learn from the remote. Um, if you are advertising anything from the remote, uh, from the adjacent router, you should see the route under this particular uh, routing table for the OSPF protocol. All right, guys, um, that's all in this video. Please do subscribe to my channel, hit the like button and stay safe. Have a good day.